Welcome and thank you for joining us for an onboard limited release presentation for healthcare providers. This presentation will provide insight on an early component to our business information system, an initiative we are referring to as onboard limited release, previously known as onboard 1.0. To start, we will provide a project overview. We'll go through a basic timeline so you'll understand what's coming and when to expect the full system. We'll detail what onboard limited release is, why we are doing a limited release, and what processes limited release will change for the healthcare provider community. We will share sample walkthroughs for the new submission process for a request for decision on unpaid bills, Form HP1, and a sample submission process for completing a prior authorization request, or PAR, in limited release. And finally, we'll provide you with some helpful resources. We have recently communicated about Onboard with a new video, web page, frequently asked questions, and emails. So some of you may already be familiar with what Onboard is, but if you're not, you may be asking yourself, what is Onboard? Onboard is a system the Workers' Compensation Board has been developing to modernize workers' compensation system processes in New York State, changing the way stakeholders interact with the board and with each other. Along with our integration partner, CapTech Consulting, Onboard will replace our current paper-based systems, such as eCase and CIS, with a brand new, single, web-based platform. This system will improve and expand access to real-time claim data with new, electronic self-service features to improve and simplify interacting with the board and virtually eliminate the paper forms currently used. This will improve system responsiveness to stakeholder needs, and ultimately lead to providing New York State's injured workers with greater access to benefits and medical care. This multi-year project initially began in the summer of 2019, with the full system being available in mid-2023, but we identified opportunities to implement some early process improvements and functionality sooner in what we are referring to as onboard limited release. Onboard Limited Release is scheduled for release during spring of 2021. In mid-2021, Phase 2 will be available, which includes eClaims EDI 3.1. The complete onboard system is expected to release in mid-2023. As I mentioned, the first rollout called Limited Release will go into production and used in spring 2021. Let's go over why we chose to do a limited release and the reasoning behind our focus on the processes this early release will contain. On January 1, 2020, the expanded provider law went into effect and expanded the types of medical providers authorized to treat workers' compensation. With more providers able to treat injured workers, we expect a significant increase in the number of registrations the board will receive. Due to the increased registrations, the number of providers authorized to treat workers' compensation will grow, and ultimately these improvements will greatly increase the number of forms received and processed. In order to successfully manage these processes efficiently and successfully, limited release focuses on the automation of provider authorization requests, referred to as PARs, and the submission of HP1s, the request for decision on unpaid medical bills. All improvements have been designed to make it easier and more streamlined for providers to participate in the workers' comp system. Onboard limited release will facilitate electronic communications for the PAR process and all parties involved, and immediately upon rollout will replace the following paper forms. The attending doctor's request for optional prior approval and carrier's employer's response, form MG1. And very important note here that with onboard limited release, the MG1 process will be optional for providers, but will now be mandatory for carriers. The attending doctor's request for approval of variance in carrier's response, form MG2, and the attending doctor's request for authorization and carrier's response, form C4 off. With these processes now going online, healthcare providers will no longer use paper and will no longer use faxing. To transition away from paper forms, limited release will move the prior authorization request or PAR process completely online and will include the following. 
The existing MG1 process will be known as confirmation in the new system and will be confirmation that the treatment the provider wishes to deliver is consistent with the medical treatment guidelines. MG2 will be known as variants. Special services, which includes the 12 medical treatment guideline related requests previously done using C4A and greater than 1,000 will be used for non-MTG treatments costing more than $1,000. One of the features of the new system is that a provider no longer needs to know the form they have to fill out for their request. And as you'll see here in a few minutes, the new system will use a TurboTax approach, asking the healthcare provider questions that will lead them down a path to the correct PAR submission type. Part of onboard limited release will be the introduction of a durable medical equipment or DME fee schedule that certain types of DME will require. There will also be a PAR for non-MTG treatment costing $1,000 or less, and new medication PARs as onboard limited release will be replacing the current drug formulary prior authorization request process. Similar to the current drug formulary prior authorization process, all completed PAR submissions will be transferred to the eCase folder. Onboard Limited Release will also digitize and streamline the submission of HP1's requests for decision on unpaid medical bills, and healthcare providers will submit Form HP1 solely using the web-based Limited Release platform. I should note that the rest of the HP1 process will continue using the same procedures as it does today, only the initial submission will be done using Onboard Limited Release. What benefits can providers expect when using limited release? Providers will be able to easily see their submissions and requests on a concise dashboard, giving you 24 seven access to your queue of active submissions and requests to view and take action on. As mentioned previously, when starting a submission or request, providers no longer need to remember a form name or number. This will give providers a clear path to authorization ultimately giving injured workers faster access to appropriate treatment. Throughout the process, providers also have the ability to receive email and text message status updates on PARs in progress and be able to assign delegates to facilitate the submission of PARs and their status. These delegates will be able to assemble all the information needed within the PAR, which will then appear on the provider's dashboard for review and ultimate submission. Others will benefit from limited release as well. Injured workers will receive more timely health care. Insurers, third-party administrators, and medical suppliers will have a simpler system for prior authorization requests. The board's medical director's office will also be using onboard limited release for the reviews that they perform. The process flow that providers will follow in onboard limited release is very similar to what is now being done for a medication prior authorization. It will start by accessing the medical portal. The user will perform a case search and then answer a series of questions related to the case and what type of care the provider wants to provide. The request will be submitted and the system provides auto routing and automatic timing associated with the request. The request will automatically navigate the review process within the system. And as previously mentioned, the provider can assign delegates to perform all of these steps, but must do the actual submission of the request themselves. Now that we've gone over onboard and what to expect with limited release, we want to give you an example of the submittal process for what the prior authorization request and HP1 processes will look like in the new system. The screenshots that will be shown during this walkthrough are not final and are subject to change. However, these will give you a sneak peek at how the web-based system will look and how you will navigate it and the steps you will take to complete a submission. So with that as background, I'd like to do a high-level walkthrough of the PAR submission process. And please remember that the screens you will see are prototypes that are currently still in development. And also note that we'll be rolling out a complete training program as we get closer to implementation. As a refresher, onboard limited release is focused primarily on prior authorization requests. These requests include MG1s, 
optional prior approvals. Again, optional for the provider, but mandatory response from the carrier. MG2s, medical treatment variance requests. C4 auths, non-MTG body parts and special services. DME prior auth, non-fee schedule items as well as certain items that are on the fee schedule. And formulary prior auth, non-formulary medications. With onboard limited release, prior authorization for medical marijuana will be processed as a medical prior authorization, no longer on an MG2 as it is today. Providers will begin their PAR request by accessing the medical portal. On this page, there will be a link in the treatment section for a prior authorization request. When entering onboard, providers will be presented with their home screen dashboard, which will serve as a starting point. The next step is to enter request or information. A few notes on this. As mentioned before, providers can have delegates, for example, office staff, that can assemble the PAR on their behalf, but the provider has the responsibility of reviewing and actually submitting the PAR. When a provider is assembling a PAR themselves, their own information will be defaulted and automatically populated on this initial page. If it's a delegate working with multiple providers, he or she would need to select which provider the request is being submitted on behalf of, as well as the associated provider license if there are multiple for the provider. Similar to the current formulary prior authorization system, you would begin by completing a claim lookup. This is done by entering either the WCB case number or the carrier case number. Next, the user will enter information and two of the following. Date of injury, last four of social security number, date of birth, and or the patient's last name. You would then select the category of PAR, either drug formulary, DME, other treatment or testing, or non-medical. After the PAR category is selected, the system will ask a series of data-driven questions, such as CPT code for the requested procedure, code lookup dropdown, enter a portion of the code or the name of the procedure and then select from a list, the MTG site, MTG reference code description associated with the PAR, Again, this will be a type down lookup list, the body part associated with the PAR, and if the requested treatment or testing is addressed by and consistent with the medical treatment guidelines. This completes the process of how an individual PAR is assembled and ready for submission. The user then has the ability to continue to assemble additional PARs on the same patient on the same case. For example, a surgery with subsequent DME and physical therapy, which all are different PAR types, which can be assembled and submitted together. This new process makes it virtually transparent to the user that they have submitted different PAR types that use different e-forms and take different pathways. On the left of the request details screen, the user is provided an outline view so they know where they are in the process. In this instance, since DME was added, additional details are needed. The user enters these additional details to continue. On this screen, you can see that an additional item has been added to the request. Item number one was for an MG1 consistent. Item number two is for durable medical equipment. From here, the user can add additional items or complete the request and finish the prior authorization. Once the PAR is submitted, users will see the status of that PAR in their dashboard. This dashboard is considered the home screen for onboard limited release. And from here, the user can submit another request 
or see the status of requests that have already been submitted. The ability to sort and filter are also available. You can sort by the prior auth ID, type of PAR, patient, patient date of birth, carrier case number, WCB case number, last activity, and prior auth status. On the left side, under the column Prior Auth ID, you will see hyperlinks that when selected will take you directly to the associated PAR. As I mentioned, the provider is required to submit the PAR by accessing the eForms completed by their delegates. This can be done by accessing the Draft eForms tab from the provider's dashboard. From here, they will see columns for form type, which lists the PARs that are ready for review and submission. The hyperlink is used for direct access to review and submit. These can be sorted by WCB case number, whom the PAR is being sent on behalf of, and finally, the status. Ready to submit indicates that the delegate finished completing the PAR and the provider just needs to review and send. When a PAR gets submitted by a provider, the system will automatically route it to the correct location, removing the need for a fax number. I'd like to walk you through an example of this auto routing and auto escalation by using the formulary review process as an example, which many healthcare providers are familiar with. PARs will follow the same levels, starting with the prior authorization being initiated with the prescriber. Then the level one reviewer will approve partially approve or deny. It will go back to the prescriber for review and either be approved for injured worker treatment or continue through to level two for approval, partial approval or denial. Again, it will go back to the prescriber to either move on to injured worker treatment or a level three review. I'd now like to give you a brief overview for the submissions of HP1's Request for Decision on Unpaid Bills in Onboard Limited Release. As I mentioned previously, Onboard Limited Release will only be used for submitting a request for decision on unpaid medical bills. The remainder of the process will continue using the current state systems and processes. Requests escalated to arbitration or adjudication will continue as needed using the same processes as today. Similar to PARS, users will begin by accessing the medical portal. On the medical portal, there will be a link that users will select to submit a disputed medical bill. After accessing the medical portal, you would then perform a case search and answer a series of questions to begin the submission process. After all questions have been answered, you will submit the e-form to initiate the review process. And again, Onboard Limited Release will only feature the submission of the request for unpaid medical bills. The next levels will continue with the same process as today, but the new system will provide complete management of submission, review, and processing. So how will you be trained on using the new system? As we move closer to using limited release, the board will be providing plenty of opportunities to receive updates and training. We will be hosting a monthly webinar series where we will walk you through presentations just like this one. More information on these monthly sessions will be announced soon, so keep an eye out for that. Just prior to onboard limited release becoming available in spring of 2021, we'll be providing just-in-time training webinars to provide you with everything you'll need to know for day one. Back sheets, training guides, and video tutorials will also be developed, and website content is being continuously refreshed to assist you along the way. Various New York State Medical Trade Associations will also be educated on how to use the system to better support you, and we'll be providing you with support channels so you know where to go if assistance is needed. So what do you need to do now to prepare? You should conduct a review of any current systems and procedures to identify potential impacts. After going live with onboard limited release, the board will no longer be using paper for PARs or HP1 submittals. So please ensure your procedures are in place for day one. We also encourage you to review the onboard webpage. The content featured there will provide you with an understanding of the changes associated with the onboard limited release. 
We hope that this walkthrough helped give you an idea of what to expect with limited release. For more information, you can go to the onboard webpage at wcb.ny.gov onboard, where you can find an overview and timeline, FAQs, and additional resources. This is also where you can subscribe to receive onboard news straight to your inbox for both onboard limited release and the larger onboard project. That concludes today's presentation, but if you have any questions, please email onboard at wcb.ny.gov. Thank you for your interest in onboard limited release and have a great day.